Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed the Cute World Summit so far. My name is Lukas Kosinski and I'm the founder and CEO of Site Studio, a cute QML consulting company. We believe that this community around Qt framework is the most essential thing for this technology, so that's why Site Studio sponsors this event. Now I'm trying to look professional, but the truth is that I'm a kind of a nerd. I'm a cute self-learner. I work as a Qt QML developer and I still code from time to time. If you are new to Qt, you should be interested in the topic of my talk, which is CMake and Qt, Qt add QML module in practice, as working with QML modules is something that you will have to do sooner or later. This talk is pre-recorded, so I'm with you on the chat. Feel free to leave me a message there. The presentation consists of five elements. First, I will tell you what are QML modules and when to use them. Then you will get a short overview of the CMake function, which is the main topic of this talk. Then I will show you how to have multiple QML modules, how to add resources to your module, and at the end, I will show you how to register your custom C++ class as QML type. I know that some of those elements deserve one hour presentation, but unfortunately this talk is quite short, so please forgive me for any simplifications. Let's begin with the first element, the explanation of QML modules. Even if you are new to Qt, you use them every day by importing QML modules shipped with Qt framework like Qt Quick or Qt Quick Controls. Modules are like namespaces for groups of QML items. Modules are like packages, like libraries that you may want to use to better organize your project. With a module, you can simply import all of the types of this module and use them in another place. Um, you can also use versioning. In Qt 6, versioning is not as common as in Qt 5, but you may still want to have modules of different versions. So go ahead and use them. Use QML modules to keep your project code base clean and maintainable. In my other talks and in our company blog post, I often talk right about conventions, good practices, and stuff to make projects maintainable. And yeah, it always leads to savings in time and money. If you already have a QML project with a growing QML code base, you should separate QML types and other elements in modules. If you have a set of commonly used UI items, put them in one module. If you have a set of items providing a specific feature, also put them in the module. In this way, you will have nice modular um, project structure. You may also want to use uh, QML modules if you create and share cute QML libraries, either, either within your organization or in the community. And you can also use uh, modules to introduce the aforementioned versioning. Uh, in fact, local folders are also a kind of QML module, but with specified modules, you do not need to import stuff from long and unreliable relative paths. So that is a tiny thing, but it's another argument to use QML modules. In the past, QML modules were defined using QML dir files. Those files are text files where you could specify which items should be part of the module. It looked like that. First, you specify the module identifier and then you were listing the items. You could mark some of these files as singletons or as private to be used only by other modules items. The solution is quite okay and it's still used in many projects. However, the new approach with uh, CMake, Qt, add QML module command is, I would say, more unified. So now let's talk about this command, which is the second element of this talk. I'm not going 
into details to explain why it was introduced as Ulf Hermann, QML maintainer, talked about this in his talk a year ago. However, yeah, the command looks like this. It's a single method to define a QML module of a specific identifier, URI, with it. You can easily define what QML type should be included without the need to manually fill QML DR files. In case you want to add some assets to the projects like images, fonts, or videos, you do not need to create a separate resources specifications. This command also allows to easily mix C++ and QML into one module. And it allows to easily set up tools like uh, QML links to verify your code. Okay, so now let's make a short example of how you can use this command. Let's say that you need only one module for your project for now, for all the QML items. Then you add this command to your CMake list file. You specify the target, URI, and list of QML items following QML files keyword. It's not necessary, but you can also specify resource prefix variable. I like to do that to always know how to get my resources and QML files and uh, to not mix them with resources and items from outside the module. Okay, so then you need to go to your main CPP file and import to your QML engine the path that is equal to a resource prefix variable. This way, you tell the engine where to look for modules. Then you load your main QML file as always, but the path should start from resource prefix follow, followed by module identifier, um, which in this case is super app. And then you put the path to, to, to the main file. In main QML file, you can now import your module by writing import and then the module identifier. This way you should have access to another type from your module, which is page. You may notice that page QML file was placed in the subfolder, but we do not need to import um, the relative path within the same module, which is good. Yeah, and that's it. That is the basic usage of QML modules and the new command. Let's now continue with another third element of the presentation. The case when we want to have more than one QML module. So first, let's say that we want to use those two extra modules, one for utilities, like JavaScript functions and singleton types to keep colors and just widely used stuff. And the second one for basic commonly used UI items, like own text item or own button item, on the right, we can see how the page QML file uh, from the first example will look like uh, after uh, this example. It's going to use both the basic and utilities modules uh, to display uh, some text and some button, some result of JavaScript function. Okay, so first you need to put module files in a separate directory. I'll put them all there and create a CMake list file. Um, that will have a definition of the module. Then we need to fill this CMake list definition. We need to make the module a library. That's a nice way to work with modules to have another target as modules can have their own dependencies. And after all, you can treat them as a separate sub projects and also maintain them separately. This module is simple. It doesn't require an unusual dependencies, but you still need to link quick module to it. Then we do everything like last time. We pass the new target, which is library. We specify the identifier, version, and resource prefix, and then we pass the list of QML files that should be part of the module. Now I'm in a different CMake list file. Um, it's not for the basic module, it's for utilities. You can specify here which items should be singletons by setting them cute QML singleton type property. Remember that you will still need to use pragma singleton in those QML files. Okay, and then after that, we need to make the main application target aware 
of the modules. In order to do that, go to the main CMake list file, then up subdirectories with those modules, and then link automatically generated plugins to the main target. The name of the plugins is a combination of the module target name and the plugin suffix. Yeah, and that is it. We have a rectangle of color that we have taken from the singleton type that is imported from utilities module. We also have a result of calling the JS function from the same module. And we have a button that comes from the basic module. Now next, the fourth element of the presentation. Let's have a look at this video player example. It has some icons that are needed to make it work. Using Qt add QML module CMake command allows adding them to the explicit module. And thanks to this command, you can also preview the resources in the Qt creator. Um, by the way, I suggest um, you updating Qt creator to the newest version as uh, there are plenty of improvements regarding identifying modules. Okay, so video player is neither a utility nor a basic UI item. Let's add another module then and call it widget to keep uh, such kinds of items. As previously, we create a subfolder on a disk with QML files, make lists um, file and assets that you will need. Then we do everything as previously, but additionally, we add a list of assets to the module definition in CMake. The list of assets should follow the resources keyword. Then we can use our assets within the module. Assets are added to the Qt resources system and, and to access them, you need to pass the appropriate path, which is first the resources prefix uh, variable, then module identifier, and then a path to the specific file. And this is basically it. I know that I do not show the entire code, but there is no time for this now. You will get a link to the GitHub repository with all of the examples later, I promise. Okay, now it's time for the last element, which is mixing C++ and QML. So, well, before going further, I will shortly explain what it means to register a C++ class as QML type. Qt Framework is an amazing tool. We can freely mix C++ and QML components um, to complement each other. Therefore, you can create your own CPP visual or not visual classes and use them as any other type in QML. So for this example, I prepared a custom C++ class that allows me to draw something. It's a bit like a signature part that uh, post offices or couriers use. I want now to register this class as QML type and uh, include it in a widgets module that we already created. So the first thing that I need to do is to go to the class definition and use the QML element macro there. I will not go into the details now on the Safe Studio blog that is a series of posts covering topic of QML element uh, macro and, and friends. Um, then you will need to go to the CMake list of widgets and you add both header and source of sign path um, class uh, just after the sources keyword in Qt add QML module command. Yeah, and it's simple as that. That's basically all that you need to do. After doing that, you can import the widgets module and use your a custom C++ class as any other QML type. It couldn't be more straightforward. So this is all for today from me. The presentation is recorded, but um, I want to believe that if I were in the same room, I would get a standing ovation right now. I leave here links to some resources that you can additionally read. There is also a link to the Site Studio repository with the examples I have used today. If you have some extra questions or comments or you want to work for us or to use our services, feel free to contact me. Thank you for today. And I really, really appreciate that you were here with me. You are awesome and you made the Qt community great.